without the, the, the doctor was starting to put her on medication and she's a young woman she's 30 35 at the time now she's 36 she just called me yesterday and she's pregnant and very happy uh, because she wanted to have a baby and with the dilated cardiomyopathy they said no no you shouldn't have a baby you're going to be on these medications and you know all that stuff and now she's off all the medications because we had the hole in her heart fixed and so now every, it's working properly. And so, and, and so now she's pregnant and she's very happy. Um, and it's because of finding the cause of the heart problem. Hello, hello everyone. Welcome to the Healthy Heart webinar. We have Cheryl and Dr. Saunders here today. Let me change your view so you can see all three of us. Otherwise, you're just going to see me talking. There you go. Hello and welcome. Welcome back to Thursday's show of the Healthy Heart webinar. We're excited that you guys are here. We are, we're getting close to 30 episodes. So we do this once a week and uh, we primarily stick to the topic of uh, heart, the heart, uh, whether that is preventing vascular disease or um, maybe you've already had a diagnosis and we talk about how to change that, how to reverse that. And we have had so many great questions from so many of you. And so today we're going to chat a little bit and then we'll open it up for Q and a, just like we always do. Uh, but you can find more information about these webinars and others that we do at bartonwebinar.com. Today's going to be a fun topic. We are actually going to be talking about heart surgeries, surgeries, so that means more than one, what, how, I don't even know a lot about heart surgeries. I, I've heard some things, uh, but we're going to dig into those, see what they are, what we should know about them, which surgeries we want to avoid, probably all of them. I don't know, uh, but we're going to see what Dr. Saunders has to share about that. I think this is one of those topics that he is excited about. So that's always fun. Uh, this will be the last time. Actually, I'll let Dr. Saunders share this. Your, your scenery is going to change next week. Yeah, yeah, next week I am getting a new office because the building has been sold. And uh, so they're uh, gonna tear it down. So I'm going to a new office. I'm gonna be in a women's clinic uh, starting next week. <laughs> awesome. Cool. So when you're gonna be, you'll be at that women's clinic, like what you're doing now, what is it that you're doing? Are you just general? doctoring people or anything specific no, they're doing? No, no, it's, it's way different. So instead of, uh, of treating um, symptoms of illness with drugs, I look for the root cause of why things happen. So someone comes in with hypertension, for example, uh, I go, well, your blood pressure's high. Okay, so I had a woman in this morning, she's only 40 years old, her blood pressure's high. Um, she's been having issues like chest pain and she's been to the hospital several times and, and they go, no, it's not your heart, uh, but your blood pressure is high. And, but instead of me giving her a, a, blood, a blood pressure medication, um, I asked the question, why? Why does a 40 year old woman, she's got a five year old kid, you know, she's like a young woman. Why is, why is her blood pressure elevated? That's kind of unusual. And so I asked her a bunch of questions and it turns out she has some irregular menstrual cycles. So we're gonna do studies on her hormones because she, it appears that she has hormone imbalances, um, probably from progesterone. How do I know progesterone? Because anxiety, because progesterone calms. So when women get anxiety, it's often because their progesterone drops low. And the other clue was that she had multiple um, miscarriages. Um, early miscarriages. She had like five miscarriages. She only has one kid and, and she wanted to have another kid. She's now 40 and doesn't know if she'll be able to, but I don't know, maybe we can work her hormones up uh, enough that she will we'll be able to. So I don't know. Anyway, the point is uh, though I look for clues of what might be going on. So it appears to be her hormones. So we're going to do a bunch of tests. And we're gonna we're gonna specify exactly what the problem is, and then try and balance things so that she can live a normal life and not go to the ER every week. Okay, so let me just clarify this: someone came in with high blood pressure, and you didn't give them a high blood pressure med. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Are we sure? Are we sure that's right? Exactly. Well, no, because guess what? Progesterone relaxes 
the blood vessels and lowers the blood pressure. So it's normal for women to have lower blood pressure than men. And um, women tend to have less heart disease than men until they get uh, past menopause. So, so, you know, all of this is all kind of converging on this progesterone issue that appears. Very interesting. There, there you go, guys. You learned something about high blood pressure today. I think we might've talked a little bit about that even last week, because we talked about sleep, we talked about high blood pressure. Um, so very interesting. So Dr. Saunders, tell us what kind of a doctor you are. What I are, <laughs> that's a good question. Okay, so I, um, I, 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 what do I, when people come in, I tell them, okay, um, I have a medical degree, but I'm not a regular doctor. I don't prescribe drugs. Uh, instead of using drugs to treat symptoms, I look for the root cause. So functional medicine is kind of what I do, um, but um, functional medicine has kind of moved in the direction of, of I have a program, uh, a functional medicine program, and, and whoever comes into my office fits into my functional medicine program. Mm -hmm. So a lot of functional medicine practitioners are not doing diagnosis. So I tell everybody I'm a diagnostician. I do, like, if you've ever watched the show House, um, that's what I do. I, I, I actually just diagnose what people have. Interesting. So do, so do functional doctors just treat symptoms then? Um, a lot of them are now doing that, yeah. So ideally, the functional medicine was, was revolved around restoring function. So you got to know what the dysfunction is in order to restore the function. Uh, well, since so many people in the, especially in the United States, um, are their their problems revolve around like the the diabetes, the metabolic problems, then most functional medicine doctors just have a metabolic program where you're doing uh, something like the diabetes solution kit, you know, kind of thing. And, and so you go into their program, you pay them their fee, and then you do their program. And that's what functional restoring function is um, instead of, of actually looking for the root cause. Why is this happening? Very interesting. Uh, I think I've mentioned this before, but there is a, someone that I follow who used to kind of be in the medical field. And now he just really talks about how often our symptoms that we are experiencing or, or what he believes uh, is your body actually trying to heal itself. And we often work against our body. And so we need to pay attention to what, what your, maybe your disease is or your symptoms or whatever, because it's giving you clues to what you can be doing. And so I believe you kind of practice that way. You think like that. Um, you know, we shouldn't dismiss, maybe you have knee pain. Well, what is it? What is that saying? Does it mean you need knee surgery? I don't know. It might mean something else. So the body's or just so, really interesting. Similar, similar to that, somebody like um, uh, yesterday uh, had, uh, came in with one issue. Um, I think it was sleep, one, one issue sleep. Um, uh, oh, oh, and by the way, I also get panic attacks and, and oh by the way I also have arthritis and so what I try to do is put it all together why does this person have the this set of symptoms and it turns out I suspect he has a um, Ehlers-Danlos syndrome um, a, a EDS uh, and there's a, a lot of different types it's a connective tissue disorder oh he also has thinning skin that's that was another clue so so uh, and and they're all related to the, the connective tissue disorder. So we're doing testing on that. So, you know, it, you take these symptoms that seem like they're not even related and yet uh, you can put them all together. Like, like today, the woman with the progesterone, um, chest pain, well, well, heart disease, right? A panic attacks, waking up with, you know, with panic attacks, um, uh, high blood pressure, um, and, and so, you know, normally doctors would split it all up and give one pill for that, one pill for that, one pill for that, one pill for that. When really it's all one thing. She's just low in progesterone wow. that, and it makes all those symptoms. You know, and that's the scary thing for me, just imagining, wow, it could be a progesterone issue or the alternative is you've given her three drugs and maybe they won't have side effects. Probably they will. And then what happens down the road when all of a sudden she has this other side effect that has come from it, she gets another drug to combat 
that side effect. And it is this vicious cycle that we have heard from so many of you who are on this webinar over and over and over where you are, you have so many drugs that now when something goes wrong, you don't even know what it's from. You don't know which of the drugs are creating the issue. And that is sad and that is hard. And so that's kind of the goal of these webinars is really let, let's get to the point where we don't have to do that. I, and Dr. Saunders will tell you, you know, sometimes drugs work and I don't know that drugs are always meant to be taken forever, but they do help. Um, so we're going to, we're going to talk about the heart. We're going to talk about how to keep our heart healthy so that we don't need to get to that point where we have to make those decisions. Um, one of the things that we're going to talk about today is just the different types of heart surgery. And so uh, I hope that we never have to deal with these things, but let's dig in and let's talk about this. What, what can we learn from you, Dr. Saunders? Okay. So it's the same thing. What you need to know if you have any kind of heart disease is you need to know why, why is it happening? And so for example, I had a uh, a young woman uh, who had dilated cardiomyopathy. So she goes to the cardiologist, Car dilated cardiomyopathy means the heart just is not pumping very well and dilated means it's big. So she has this big floppy heart that's just not pumping very well. So she goes to the doctor, the doctor gives her a beta blocker. Um, and uh, and, uh, and then in her, her blood pressure is dropping down, she's getting dizzy. Uh, so he takes her up and puts her on another um, ACE inhibitor so that dr to drop her blood pressure um, so that her heart doesn't have to work as hard, um, but never bothered to figure out why. So we started doing tests. <clears throat> I had an ultrasound done um, called the TEE where they do, they put bubbles in um, to see um, if there's a hole in the heart and she had a hole in the heart. And, and what it means is you have the right side that pumps and the left side that pumps and it's all one heart and it's going like this, but there's really two completely separate sides. Um, one side pumps to the, to, the, to the lungs and the other side pumps to the body. And, and so that, that's how the heart is working. It looks like it's all one heart, but it's really two separate pumps. Well, there's a septum between the two sides and she had a hole. And so the blood uh, on, from the left side, uh, which is higher pressure because it goes all to the body, is squirting over to the other side and going into the lungs. So the lungs are getting higher pressure than they should. Um, and uh, we did some other tests to find out all about that. And that, that, was, all, that was why we did the ultrasound, but I, I'm kind of cutting to the chase here. The point is, Without the, the the doctor was starting to put her on medication, and, and she's a young woman. She's 30, 35 at the time. Now she's thirty six. She just called me yesterday, and she's pregnant and very happy um, because she wanted to have a baby. And with the dilated cardiomyopathy, they said, "No, no, you shouldn't have a baby. You're going to be on these medications, and you know all that stuff." And now she's off all the medications because we had the hole in her heart fixed. And so now every, it's working properly. And so, and, and so now she's pregnant and she's pretty happy. Um, and it's because of finding the cause of the heart problem. <clears throat> so if you have heart disease, find out why. Not everybody has the same thing. For example, what if you have clogged arteries? Is it a cholesterol problem? Well, for the large majority of the people, remember, uh, we talked about cholesterol being a cause of heart disease, very minor. So a few people are gonna have a cholesterol problem, very few, okay? Um, so what about the majority? What are they gonna have? They're gonna have clotting problems. So either they're clotting too much, they're doing damage to their arteries that are causing clots, or they're not repairing their arteries once they're damaged. So you can make a clot, and uh, uh, damage the artery, make a clot and repair it. And you won't even notice it. Nothing will happen. You're not going to get any clogs. You're not going to get any atherosclerosis and you don't have any heart disease from that. That's the normal functioning. Um, but what if you have a problem of clotting where you clot easily, then, uh, then you're going you're gonna to form these clots in your artery and you're going to clot more than usual and those clots may not dissolve. Uh, so then you're gonna get hardening of the arteries, the atherosclerosis. Um, what if you have a problem 
that causes you to do damage to the lining of the arteries. Like you don't make the en endocalyx very well, uh, glycocalyx of the endothelium very well. Um, or, or what if you have a problem of not repairing well? And that could be just stress. When you're stressed, you have high cortisol. Cortisol blocks the APCs, they're called, uh, progenitor cells, from, from fixing the lining of your arteries. Um, or what if you have a high lipoprotein A, LP little a, that doesn't allow your clots to dissolve. So you make a clot and you, and you, you pave over it and it looks okay, but that clot is still stays in, in the between in the wall of your artery. And then it starts forming calcium deposits and then you get hardening of the arteries. So all of those are different reasons for the same problem. That's why you need to know why. If you don't know why, then you don't know what to do about it. Uh, if you know why, then you can do something about it. So if all you do is say, you go to the, you go to the cardiologist and they say, well, you got a 30% blockage of your arteries. Let's wait till it's about 50%. We can put a stent in there, right? Um, or let's just wait until it's like 70%. And then, then we'll do, we'll, we'll crack your chest open and do a bypass surgery. We'll cut a vein out of your leg. And then we'll take that vein and cut into pieces. And then we'll, 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 we'll uh, put, uh, put the vein around from one part of the artery to the other part to bypass that blockage in your artery. Um, and that's being done every day. These are the most common surgeries done. So if you think about that and you go, hmm, okay, doctor. So you wanna, cause I have these like three blockages and so I'm, that's risky, right? I could have a heart attack any day now and die. And, and so, and uh, yep, yep, that's a problem. So what happens if I do the surgery? Am I more likely uh, or less likely to die? Well, if you just look at it overall statistically, it's about the same. So your chances of dying from the surgery or with the surgery um, are about the same as if you did nothing at all. So why would you even do surgery? Because it doesn't, you don't live longer with the surgery. Um, that's actually never been shown. Every study that's done shows that the length of life is about the same, whether you do nothing at all or bypass surgery. Um, and that's after like getting your chest cracked open. So, uh, so why would you do the surgery? Here's why, you have less chest pain, that's all. So I had um, a patient that couldn't walk across the room without getting chest pain and, or couldn't, no, no, it wasn't walk across the room. He couldn't walk to the mailbox, that was his big thing. He's, he's gotta go out. And his mailbox is in, you know, in front of his house on the street. So he wants to go out to the mailbox without getting chest pain. Um, so, so I recommended some things he could do. He says, nah, I'm going to have the surgery. So he has the surgery and now he can walk out to, to his mailbox. And, and so, and he doesn't get chest pain. So he can walk further and it's fine. <clears throat> That's the benefit of surgery. You, you can, you don't get angina as much. And, and that's, that's pretty clear that that's what it does. Um, but are there other ways? Yeah, we've talked about other ways. You don't have to do surgery. Um, we talked about uh, ex-president Bill Clinton had a uh, bypass surgery and uh, he, he started getting chest pain again after several years. And the, uh, and the doctor said, oh, yeah, got to do it again. He goes, what, you didn't do it right the first time? He <laughs> said, they said, no, you know, they get blocked again. You just got to do it again. That's what happens. He's like, are you kidding me? After that horrible surgery, you want me to do that again? I'm not doing that again. What else can I do? And nothing. There's nothing you could do. You just have the surgery or you just have chest pain. Uh, those, those are your only options. He goes, and I'm going to look around. <clears throat> so he um, found someone called Esselstyn, uh, Dr. Esselstyn in, uh, at Cleveland Clinic. And, uh, and, and started doing his program. And I don't know if you've seen uh, Bill Clinton lately. He's pretty thin. Uh, he's really changed his diet and he doesn't get chest pain and he doesn't need any surgery anymore. And he's completely cleaned out his arteries and didn't have the, the surgery, uh, didn't need it. So, uh, so there are other options, but the surgical option is one. Okay, so the other one that we didn't talk about was the, um, the stents. 
what about stents? Uh, it makes perfect sense. You got this artery that's blocked. You put this, um, this tube in, it's kind of like a spring. You put it in there and the spring goes bing, and opens up that artery and it works. It works. So um, that's great. So what, is it, what does it do? And well, it actually opens up the artery and you actually get less chest pain. So the, uh, the, again, you don't live longer, um, but you will have less or you should have less um, chest pain. Um, so angina. So if you have what's called stable angina, which means that, that uh, pretty predictably, if you walk up a flight of stairs, then you're going to get chest pain. Um, then you can put a stent in and pretty predictably, you'll be able to walk up the stairs without getting chest pain. So same, same kind of issue as the, the bypass surgery. Um, however, um, you are more likely to get clots uh, because the stents are uh, foreign material, foreign matter that, that uh, can, can produce clots. So you have to be on a uh, blood thinner um, at least for about six months until your body kind of caves over that. Um, <clears throat> so, uh, so then the blood thinners have their own issues. And, and again, it's not that you're gonna live longer. You're not gonna live longer from the stents. Um, I, I had one patient that had, um, he had a stent put in and they put him on a, a cholesterol medication. And then he had another stent put in and they, and, uh, they, put, they put in a higher dose of the medication then he had another stent put in and he did this five times. And every time he had another stent put in because he had another blockage in his artery, they gave him a higher dose of the medication because they never looked at why. Why was he getting these in the first place? Why was he having clots? Why was he doing damage? Or why wasn't he repairing it? And so um, we started on a program. I took him off of all that and, and we can't take the stents out. Stents, once they're in, they're in. And, and you got him for life. Um, and so he still had to be on the blood thinner because he's got these stents put in, right? Um, but we started looking at the underlying cause and working on that. Um, and then his cardiologist said, absolutely not, uh, absolutely not. You have to be on that and uh, the cholesterol medication. And, uh, and, and, and it's kind of dumb for you to, to look at the cause because that's the, because nobody really knows. So he never did. He went back to his cardiologist and I never saw him again. So I don't know what happened to him ultimately. Wow. Um, but it's likely, you know, that he's going to get more clots and then you can't put stents and then he's going to have to have bypass and then probably repeat that again. I don't know. Anyway, so those are the kinds of issues with heart surgery uh, that come up. Other heart surgeries include valvular surgery. Some people that have heart failure, it's because the valve isn't working right. So you got to think that these valves, you know, they let the blood go up, but it can't go down. It can go only go one way. It's a, just a one way valve. And if that valve is leaky, then it's not one way anymore. It's two way. Because if the valve leaks, <clears throat> then the blood goes this way and then it goes that way. And then it goes this way and then it goes that way. And if your blood is just moving back and forth, it's not circulating. And that's a problem, right? So what happens is when the, the valve is really leaky, the heart will get big and floppy too, just like with the hole in the heart. Um, so then those often need surgery. And uh, valve surgery these days is amazing. So sometimes they can use a balloon to, to dilate the valve. If it's, if it's really like called stenosis, if it's really blocked up, they can put a balloon in there and blow it up and, and widen out that valve so, so that uh, blood can get through easily. Um, if it's just floppy and it's not working at all, um, there are several different types, types of valves that they can use. They use pig valves, um, and uh, they also use um, uh, mechanical valves. And sometimes if you're sitting next to somebody, you hear tick, tick, right. tick, tick, that's, that, that's the valve in their heart. And wow. uh, sometimes mechanical valves, you can hear them, uh, some types of and uh, so I, I had that yesterday. Somebody was in my office and I hear tick, tick. And it's clearly coming from, um, from him. And I'm like, do you have a mechanical heart valve? He goes, no, no, my heart's fine. I, I, and I'm like, what the heck? Um, it was his watch. <laughs> he, had, he had one of those old fashioned watches that actually goes tick, tick, tick. Oh, tick, that's tick. funny. Yeah. And so, so, my, so, 
Oh, go ahead, Cheryl. I was going to say my mother had heart valve surgery and she had it replaced with a bo bovine, I think. Bovine. Yeah. So what causes the weakening of the valve then? Um, there are several different reasons. Some people have um, like uh, Ehlers-Danlos syndrome, which is a, uh, uh, an, a connective tissue disorder. And so they don't have really strong connective tissues. So um, you got to think these valves are taking a lot of beating, you know, and, uh, and you're not making new valves. And if you have something of a weakness in the connective tissue, then that's a problem. Um, some people, they form calcium deposits. They're just depositing calcium and, uh, and uh, inflammation is happening because of that constant beating of the valve. And so they're getting inflamed and they're getting calcium deposits. Um, so sometimes that causes stenosis of the valve. Uh, sometimes people are born with it. Uh, some people have like, they have uh, three leaves of the valve and some people have two leaves of the valve and that, that uh, affects how the valve functions. Um, but you gotta think these valves are under a lot of stress. Uh, the mitral valve is very common because the mitral valve, it, it has a, a tether, it's tethered so that it doesn't go past. And if that little tether cord is, uh, is stretched out or something, then, then the valve gets leaky really easily. And so that's a really common thing is the mitral valve prolapse. Um, but if it's prolapsing too much, then you still have the same problem that that the blood is going two ways instead of circulating one way, uh, it's going back and forth and back and forth. And you really need those valves. That's really important. Uh, Kathy said that her doctor wants to do ablation to stop AFib. What would that be? Okay, that's another heart surgery we didn't talk about. Um, okay, so think of atrial fibrillation as, uh, as the, the place where the heart uh, is, gets its impulse from. So the impulse starts in a, a certain place in the heart, um, in the atrium. Uh, and if, if that's not functioning properly, then you get the impulse going irregularly. And so it'll be an irregular, irregular. And so what they do is they go in and they burn it. And there are various ways of burning. They can do it electrically. And now they're using uh, radio frequency, which is just ultra uh, microwaves, essentially. You're putting a microwave oven in there <laughs> and cooking it um, uh, or infrared. But yeah, um, it's radio waves. Uh, so then, uh, or they burn, burn it with uh, electricity. And what they want to do is form scar tissue there that's not going to cause an impulse to happen. Uh, and so what that does is blocks this irregular impulse so that, so that it can go back to being regular. Because if you, take, if you take a heart cell out of the heart and put it into a Petri dish, it will beat. It just does on its own. It doesn't have to have an impulse. The, the, they, will, they will just beat on their own. But if you have an impulse, it will accept the impulse and then, and then uh, they will all beat together because of that impulse that's going through every, well, 60 times a minute or 80 times a minute or whatever. Um, <clears throat> so uh, so um, what this does is allows another part of the heart, essentially, another part of the atrium, instead of the part where the, the um, impulse originates, that'll be scarred down. So now another part that's going to be more regular is going to cause that impulse so that your heart can be regular again. So that's all it is. It's just scarring down that uh, in the area where the impulse starts. Uh, here's another message from Kathy. She said, okay, so I have high blood pressure and then was diagnosed with severe sleep and AFib. The doctor took me off my blood pressure and put me on Eliquis and for the AFib, amiodarone, amiodarone. Amiodarone. Also Okay, and also took me off of my bioidentical hormones. I am a mess, she said. Oh, yeah, that's a big deal. So hormones are so powerful. Okay, so, so atrial fibrillation uh, uh, is caused by a, a lack of energy. And, and we've talked about this before, how, how the, the um, cell, uh, the, the muscle cell is like a mousetrap. 
And you have to put the energy into it uh, to set the mousetrap. And all you need is a little impulse from the brain to go snap. And, and then the mousetrap goes, right? But then you need energy to reset it. And that, that's the way your muscles work is they re, they're resetting uh, with the energy. When there's not enough energy, then they don't reset all at the same time. Some are resetting slower than others. And so then, then you get irregular rhythms because one's beating this fast and one's beating this fast. And so they're all, they can be all over the place. And, and one can start an impulse faster than another one. And, and, and so it's not, um, the system is, is broken. The atrial fibrillation happens because there's, uh, there's irregular um, resetting. So it's, it's an energy problem ultimately. So if you deal with the energy problem, then, then you may need the ablation to reset it and, and have it working regularly. Um, if you're in atrial fibrillation, then somehow you got to thin your blood because you'll form clots because the, the, the atrium is just, just fibrillating. It's just wiggling. It's not actually pushing blood through. It's just wiggling. So the blood that's just kind of sitting there can form clots and those clots can go anywhere in your body, but 20% of the time they're going to go into your brain and cause a stroke. So uh, somehow you got to thin your blood if you have atrial fibrillation. And, uh, and so they use Eliquis in this case would be one way of doing it. Um, but, uh, but there are other ways. You can dissolve clots with something called natokinase. And some people use that. Lumbrokinase is also commonly used, which is a clot dissolver. So those are enzymes that you can take that don't require a prescription. Um, and then, uh, and I had somebody yesterday with atrial fibrillation. He's been uh, many years, I forgot how many, 20 years uh, with atrial fibrillation. And uh, he just eats garlic, raw garlic. Uh, because that's a, actually a really good blood thinner, uh, raw garlic. And um, he hasn't had any issues with clots that he knows of because clots can go like other places in the body and you wouldn't notice it because there's either redundant circulation uh, or it's an area of your body that it doesn't matter and, and, it, and the clot can take time to dissolve and it won't be a big deal. Um, so yeah, you do need some kind of clot dissolver, but um, the, it, it, there's no reason that you have to go off your hormones. I don't know why you would have to go off your hormones. There wouldn't be any reason for that. Estrogen tends to cause in, uh, increased clotting, um, but that's if you take it orally. If you if you're using a, a cream, then that doesn't uh, increase your clotting. And if you balance it with progesterone, then that that improves it. And then if you take vitamin E. Um, you can actually thin your blood more. So um, fish oil, vitamin E, and then the clot dissolvers, the enzymes, natokinase and lumbrokinase. Those are the things that I usually use for people who can't take Xeralto and, uh, um, and um, any of the, um, I was saying Coumadin, you know, the people who can't take blood thinners, uh, prescription blood thinners, then we find other ways. Would ATP be helpful for heart energy? What, what, I'm sorry, which? AT, ATP or HTP? Like, yeah, ATP. ATP. Yeah, that, that's what they need, ATP. And so if you look at like our, our, our uh, heart um, supplement uh, that we have, uh, we've put things in there to make more ATP to increase the energy production of the heart. Um, so things like a coenzyme Q10, L-carnitine, uh, magnesium, um, D-ribose uh, are needed for the, um, for the mitochondria to increase the mitochondria so that you can increase the energy. Um, and then yeah. omega-3 is really good for the, uh, for blood thinning too. And I actually so. have that right here. This one's empty. I already went through it. But here's the omega-3 that we have also. If you guys want to look at these, you can go to bartonwebinar.com or you can go to Barton Nutrition and find these supplements. Uh, but that also is going to lead me into another quick thing. We have a question here. Um, Kathy, actually, no, it wasn't here. Uh, someone had written in, I have, we have a lot of people with AFib. So this is interesting. Um, I have AFib and I take medication for it, but I'm also a type 2, two diabetic. I want to take your supplements. 
Are there specific ones I should or should not take? Um, I don't know that the, this is this person's case, but this is what I want to ask. If we're worried about our heart or we're worried we have type two, can we take a supplement to help it? Um, ultimately, the supplement is not the answer. But so why do we take supplements? Well, if you have atrial fibrillation, you know you have an energy problem in your heart. If you have congestive heart failure, um, well, that's not due to like a valve or a, um, or a, a hole in the heart, um, then, then you know you have an energy problem in the heart. So, so getting energy is the key. So yeah, we use supplements because um, we use supplements, especially if we don't know why. Uh, so then we just generally say, okay, the common things are this, common things are common. And uh, we haven't tested for your magnesium levels. We don't know what your CoQ10 levels are. We don't, we don't know what the problem is specifically. But um, if we increase those, we'll tend to increase the uh, number of mitochondria and the amount of ATP that your heart makes. So um, so that's why we use supplements. So it's not that the supplements are the answer, um, especially if you have type two. If you have type two, then you don't make energy because of a metabolic problem. And then you got to go to the Healthy Heart webinar uh, and, and do the, um, the diabetes solution kit uh, so that you can uh, increase the energy production uh, metabolically. Um, because what we need is 60% fat and 40% glucose um, to, to run our bodies every day. And people with type 2 are doing just the opposite. Usually they're 60% glucose and 40% fat. Um, and that's not a, a good, that's not a good way to, uh, to keep your heart functioning well. Um, so on Wednesdays is when we do our uh, diabetes webinar, our fixed blood sugar webinar. So you can watch that. And uh, we talk specifically about that. Uh, this one, primarily we're talking about health, but here's our healthy heart solution kit. And this has a lot of the information that we cover on these webinars as well. If you're someone who really wants to have a healthy heart and you want to reverse type two, you can marry those two books. It's really easy. You, you pretty much can follow the diabetes solution kit and follow oh, uh, and do a high fiber type of diet, right? I mean, cause you're still yeah. going to be reducing stress. You're still going to want to exercise. Um, it's really good information just about keeping yourself healthy. So there you go. Uh, you can find more information about those at bartonwebinar.com. These are good questions, you guys. Uh, let me see if I can find some more. So many of you hopping on saying hi today. Okay, let me go over here. Someone did ask what the name of Bill Clinton's doctor was. Esselstyn? Oh, it was uh, Esselstyn. 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 Okay. Esselstyn. Yeah. I see a question or from early on, on uh, in the webinar chat. I have AFib and take medication for it. I'm also type 2 diabetes. I want to take your supplements. Are there any specific ones I should or should not take? Did you okay. That so that, that's the one yeah. I just read, but that's okay. <laughs> Yeah, but the, but I didn't dig answer into it. that last part of the question. So thank you. Yeah. The, yeah. Are there any that you should not take? Um, no, not specifically. I mean, if you're if you're working on your blood sugar and you take take the um, the um, the Synechroma and then you also take Berberine, um, those will also be helpful for the heart. They also increase energy and make make more um, fat energy available. Um, and so. The other ones would be uh, the, the healthy heart. You could do that. Um, so there isn't there. There aren't any of them that you should not take. And and what, which ones should you take? Well, take the ones that you need. And uh, how do you know you need them? That's that's always a good question. And the answer is mm -hmm. um, uh, go by your your symptoms. So if you have type two then, then Synechroma is going to have the supplements that someone with type two would need. Um, if you're, if you're, um, if you have, if you already have heart disease, then uh, you're going to want omega-3 and you're going to want the, the healthy heart um, supplement also. Here's an interesting question. It's, it's, I have LBBB, left branch bundle block. I lap swim every other day and I eat healthy. I have no blockages in the arteries. 
question. Can I improve my LBBV or even cure it? Okay, the, the bundle branch is, uh, or the, the bundle um, are, they're specialized fibers. They're kind of like nerve fibers that conduct the electricity through the heart. And if you have a bundle branch block, what that means is that part of the branch on the left side is not conducting uh, <laughs> or not conducting very well. Um, and, uh, and that again is mostly if it's a, an acquired thing, if you're not born with it, um, then it's <laughs> a problem with energy. So your ability for the heart to make energy uh, is impaired in some way. So can you improve it? Possibly. And that would be going on to the, the same thing and doing, um, doing uh, uh, well, we just talked about the supplements, uh, but increasing your exercise is really important. Uh, and then getting enough of the supplement or the uh, nutrients that are needed to make ATP, to increase your mitochondria. So the same things, coenzyme Q10, L-carnitine, um, D-ribose, um, magnesium. And someone had asked too, you know, we talk about a lot of those types of supplements in our uh, Healthy Heart Solution Kit book. Where should we get all those supplements? So most of them, I mean, you can find some good things at bartonwebinar.com. But, it, you know, maybe there's something specific that they want. Where do you like to get supplements? Like like D-ribose, for example, you can't really get. Uh, uh, we, we don't have that in yeah. the supplement because you need teaspoons. It, it, it'll come in a powder. Um, so the supplements, I, I get them from Emerson um, and they sell the supplements primarily through doctors. Um, but, you know, uh, I've had people tell me, well, I can get it a lot cheaper on Amazon. And here's the problem with Amazon is a lot of the supplements on there are companies that will put the label on it of a reputable company, uh, but you're not getting what you think you're getting. And we actually had a, one of my patients called me and said, um, why is my Cinechroma white? It's always been brown before. And I said, where'd you get it? She says on Amazon. So I called Kevin and Kevin said, oh man, Kevin says, we're playing whack-a-mole with those guys. They, 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 they put um, Cinechroma, it's like they've, they've printed out labels and everything. And so they make uh, this supplement that says Cinechroma and Barton uh, nutrition on it and everything. Um, and they sell it on Amazon for super cheap. Um, and, but there's, it doesn't have anything in it. It's just a sugar pill essentially. So, um, so you gotta be really careful uh, he says, every time they beat one down, then it pops up somewhere else. Uh, it's just not that easy. Yeah. So if you want to buy our supplements on Amazon, please go to the Barton Nutrition Amazon store. Uh, not just, we have had people not just on, uh, try to dupe Cinechroma, but some of our other supplements on Amazon and uh, they like put mulberry in it and they change the, they, you may not be able to see the change on the, on the label, but it'll say instead of Bart nutrition, it'll say uh, uh, something like store nutrition, something very hard to see. So please just stick with the Bart nutrition Amazon store. I'll have to put it in the link if you're interested or in the chat. Perfect. Thank you. Uh, any chance you know how to spell Dr. Or, uh, no, Dr. E S S E L S T Y N. Did you get that, guys? <laughs> e L L E S S no, T Y N. E S E S S E L S T Y N. Okay. Okay. Hopefully. Okay. Here we go. Uh, what about a heart murmur? What causes it? And does that need an operation to fix? Oh, great question. Okay. So it used to be that um, a heart murmur like um, was, well, a lot of people have heart murmurs and the heart murmur is just a noise. That's all it is, just a noise. So then the question is, what, why is the noise there? So if you have a, a, uh, uh, mitral valve prolapse, for example, where a little bit of the mitral valve peaks up as the heart's beating, it's going and you hear that whooshing sound going through and, and you can hear it, then that's called a heart murmur. Um, if uh, if so one of the valves is like narrowed, uh, like uh, often the aortic valve 
is narrowed. And so as the blood is getting pumped out of the heart, it's going whoosh, whoosh, whoosh through that narrowed valve, like going whoosh, whoosh. Um, in, it's really interesting. In Spanish, it's called a soplo, which means to blow. It's, it's blowing uh, because that's kind of what it sounds like. That's what the whooshing sound is. So, um, uh, so that's what the noise is. And does it need surgery? Well, most of the time, no. In fact, it used to be people were trying to get, um, uh, uh, they're trying to get life insurance and the life insurance companies uh, we're saying, ah, oh, no, we can't give you insurance because you have a, a, a murmur in your heart or something like that. So then they got echocardiograms where they can look with, a, with the ultrasound, they can look at not just the structure, but the function. They can actually see the, the movement of the um, red blood cells or the, the blood through the valves and say, oh yeah, that valve is leaky and how much it's leaky. Um, and so... Uh, they, they've come to find out that a lot of murmurs really aren't significant and they don't mean anything. And yeah, there's a little bit of regurgitation or a little bit of leaking of the valve. Um, and in fact, a little leak can make a lot more noise than a big leak. If you have a big leak, and it doesn't sound like much, but if you have a little leak, and it makes more noise. And so, so actually more noise doesn't mean a worse murmur. It could mean it's better. Uh, or it could mean worse if it's stenosis of the aortic artery, or aortic valve. So the answer is, um, again, the same issue that we came up with before. Find out why. Find out why it's there. What, it, what is it exactly? Which valve is it? Or is it a valve at all? Uh, because sometimes the murmur could be like a hole in the heart. There, would there be other reasons for it? So find out why. Here's another good question. Uh, Kathy says, what causes sleep apnea? I have the, a help. Either I have the healthy heart solution kit or I have a healthy heart. I'm not sure what they're saying, uh, but what causes sleep apnea? Any relation to the heart? Okay. Sleep apnea uh, is caused when people stop breathing as they sleep. And there's two major types of sleep apnea. One is called central sleep apnea. And that's where your brain just doesn't signal your, uh, your lungs to breathe. Uh, and so you just stop breathing. Um, and, and people stop breathing sometimes for minutes at a time and their, and their oxygen level will drop really low. And, uh, and that's, uh, that could be central sleep, sleep apnea. The other way is the snoring sleep apnea. And that's the, the, um, the, the throat closes off uh, when you're super relaxed. So you go into deep sleep and then your, your, your body completely relaxes and then it, it, the tongue falls to the back of your throat and stops up the airway. So it's actually blocking the airway. The tongue is, um, and, uh, and, and so you stop breathing and then, and that could last for a minute because you're in deep sleep, right? And you don't wake up that quickly. Uh, so it can, it can last for a while. And then you wake up with a start. So you, and then it's quiet for a long time. And, and that prevents people from getting deep sleep. So some people with sleep apnea, they'll say, no, I sleep all night long and I wake up tired. And uh, I don't know why I'm so tired. I slept for 10 hours and I wake up tired. And it's because they never got deep sleep. So they didn't get restored as sleep. Um, because every time they go into deep sleep, everything closes up, their throat closes up and, and they stop breathing. Uh, so then they wake up, but they don't actually wake up all the way. They just, they wake up into a, um, into a light sleep. So they're still asleep, but all they ever get is light sleep. They never get deep sleep. So that sleep apnea can have either one of those causes. And um, the, the one cause that where the throat closes, uh, the best overall treatment, the best thing to start off with is weight loss and losing uh, weight uh, makes a significant difference. Even if you use a CPAP machine, CPAP machine is a, a mask that goes over. It has a pump that pumps air in to put pressure on there. So it's pushing air into your lungs. So your lungs, so you're not sucking air and, and closing off your, your throat. Um, so that's how the CPAP works. 
And, uh, and CPAP machines work great for people who need them. I've had people say, you know, it's life changing to get a, a CPAP machine. Other people say, ah, oh, it's so annoying. I can't have that thing on my face and, uh, and I can't sleep on my back because if you're a CPAP machine, then you can't roll over on your front or side very easily. Um, so so there are issues with it. And, and so um, the best way is to lose weight. All right. And if you are looking to do that, I have a feeling that this would help. Uh, it does, actually. Yeah. That's, that's, that's one of the things that I use. It's, yeah, it's, it's one of the side effects of, you know, if you're looking to reverse your type two and you do the diabetes solution kit, you're also many people experience weight loss. So that would be a good option. Okay. Dr. Saunders, that's it for today. Yay. Thank right. you so much. We'll see you next week. At a new location. Week. Yes. Yeah, new my location. Location. That's right. <laughs> All right, guys. All right. Thanks so much Bye. for hanging out with us. Uh, again, you can go to bartonwebinar.com. Use code webinar 25 one word, and you will save 25% on anything that you find there. If you have not subscribed to our YouTube channel, go do that also. You'll be notified anytime we upload a new webinar. And guys, if you want to get a really good education about your health, about your heart, uh, about keeping your blood sugars in check, that's the place, that is the place to go. There are probably 200 and near, nearly 250 webinars on that site. So, so much good information. And come back and ask the doc your own question here. Like yes. this doesn't get any better than this. Yes, for sure. Okay, guys. Thanks so much. Thank you, Cheryl. You're awesome. Thank we'll see you. you guys next week. Bye. Bye-bye.